All right, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Three Sickety Stacks in this thing, baby, representing TKOD Gang, Gang, Gang. Where my Shadal Gang at, baby? So I'm coming at you guys with an update for Shadals for the new format. Um, right now, there's so many good decks. There's Bisted Dragon Lee. There's Tier Limits and all the variants thereof. Runic and all the variants thereof. Sprite and all the variants thereof. You've even got decks like Exo Sisters. I mean, the list goes on, and a lot of those decks even flew can give you a really hard time and so it's not one of the best formats right now for Shadals particularly to be played in a pure variant so what I'm coming at you guys is a mix of the best cards that you can play that allow you to still synergize with your engine while inherently insulating most of the weaknesses that Shadals naturally have um, so there's like a lot of theory that was put behind this list and then the testing really helped to solidify my choices for the main deck And there's a lot of cards that might be a little bit pricey But ultimately the results that you're gonna get out of them are truly worth it For this deck to be able to perform the way that you want it to perform Without just literally just getting outclassed by other decks If you're able to play like most decks, this deck's engine is so powerful and it snowballs and maintains so much advantage and it truly is a threat and a force to be reckoned with, but it can be an uphill battle. So the way I crafted my list was I wanted to make sure that I had the most unique and multi-purpose cards that could give me the most value without being too niche requiring me to draw a combination of cards for them to be live. I wanted standalone one card starters and one card threat removals. So there's a lot of good theory that was put into this deck and this is one of the most if not the most consistent list that I've ever made up to date. It's insane going first. It's insane going second. It's so consistent you're always going to see your Shadal engine and you're naturally going to be breaking boards left and right you can break any established board right now and it, i there's cards that i play in my main deck also help to counterplay dweller which is a big deal because dweller is being summoned in like every tier deck and it's really important to have a way to stop dweller but i just want you guys to know that also just because your opponent puts you under dweller doesn't mean you can't play there's actually a lot, especially in regards to the supplementary engines that you play, there's a lot that you can still do. You just can't resolve the effects of your Shadals in your grave, and you can't resolve your fusions floating. So it's typically like activating Lancia against Flu. It doesn't mean they can't play. It just means certain cards won't work, so if their hand's not good enough, they can't push through it, but also really hurts their follow-up, and that's very similar with Shadals. You can still summon your fusions. You can still activate Al Capone. You can still do your invoke stuff, still do your branded stuff. You can still break boards. But you lose a lot of your follow-up and the mileage, so one-for-one -one interactions become more taxing on the economics of this deck. Because normally, when this deck one-for-ones, it's like a one-for-two to three, and the card that one-for-two to three to your opponent also replaces itself. Like Tears, your fusions float, so it's really hard to do with your boards, and they're very sticky. Your cards replace themselves. Everything that you do gets you more cards. So every card that you summon turn one will give you a... a like it's either going to be a massive follow-up in the terms of your recursion and your crackback or it's just literally going to be a body that replaces itself when it's removed from the field so it can be really hard to deal with this deck and not anybody's going to have a good time playing against this deck it can set up multiple negations with cards like winda and Kaliga, which are literally just an auto win and to top it all off the deck is high key cracked going second you guys so if you like this kind of content and you see yourself watching my channel in the future definitely consider subscribing make sure that you click the notification bell if you do subscribe and leave a like if you like the video leave a dislike if you didn't and make sure you check the notifications i mean not the notification but the uh descriptions in the link below if you click the description box you will see all the links to my discord my patreon etc all the ways to support my channel are there but let's get into it you guys so I ain't gonna lie, bro. This deck is nice, right? Like, this this deck is really nice. And if you guys didn't know, I love this deck to pieces. This is one of my favorite archetypes. Shadals, Herald of Perfection, Dragon Mates, and I would say decks like Sky Striker, Plunder Patrol are really just like for me all time goodies and favorites i have more favorites but those are the ones that i've been playing a lot more lately and they've been on my radar for so long and when you think about it none of those decks are really respected and i just truly see the value and potential in those decks and i kind of like to make stuff work if i see a deck and i like it and it's fun and it's enjoyable that to me is more valuable than how good it is comparatively to other decks because if you're a good deck builder and you're a good player 
there's a lot of ways that you can mitigate the fact that your deck is not inherently as powerful as other decks because there's so many generic staples and so much generic support and just powerful going second board breaker and just s cards that allow you to kind of just make up for the lack of power as long as you get the consistency down and your deck is able to have a consistent turn one board with follow-up the lack of power and the lack of oppression can easily be insulated um so i think that this deck has some of the best counterplay to counterplay that'll be used against it and its engine naturally breaks boards going second which means you don't really need hand traps to prevent the board from happening you actually would rather break the board with this deck because a lot of the board breakers are your engine cards so let's get into it for our going second cards, we're playing 3 Fenrir. This is a new inclusion. It actually was a 43 card deck and I added the 3 Fenrir because I didn't want to take anything out. I felt like if Fenrir was such a good card, but I also didn't want to take any good cards out just to play him. I think he's so phenomenal and he really does solve problems that this deck has. Um, being able to just out floodgates inherently and just being a plus one body is so powerful to me and so valuable that it carries over into your next turn. So this deck's crackback is very ferocious. And I just really think like if you open Finrear and Ultimate Slayer, or if you open Gamma and Ultimate Slayer, if you open Gamma uh, Super Poly or Gamma Fusion, if you open any combination of my going second cards, even without engine, it's kind of crazy because if you open one of these six plus one of these nine, it's so much easier to break a board and you also will just get your engine online. So I really like the going second cards that I'm playing right now. Like I said, this card is just so good. I honestly, I would not undervalue it. And if I could get away with playing it, I would. There's no reason to not play it unless your engine just simply conflicts with it or you cannot play it for the simple fact that you refuse to play it uh, for space reasons or whatever it is. Gamma's always and forever going to be the only hand trap that I would not cut playing this deck. Um, I cut talents, as you guys can see, and I'm going to explain why, but... Gamma right now is a really good counterplay to Dweller. It's one of the few hand traps that not only can hurt your opponent but help you. So it also helps me to insulate cards like Ash, um, Negations going second on my um, like my fusion and, and stuff like that, and your meltdown. Because like if you resolve if you like you get meltdown up and you resolve a card like Shadow Fusion or Branded Fusion, you're just so far ahead. The board's getting broken, you have non-targeting, non-destruction removal, and crazy follow-up and floodgates through the wazoo. Like, you can literally break your opponent's board, win the Kaliga them with a Mirror Jade up, and just your crackback's just so good, um, naturally. And even if they try to break the board, your follow-up is just so annoying sometimes, it just gets ridiculous. And like, this deck, even though tier is, like, good and a lot of their cards float, a lot of people forget that, like, Shadal was of the original OG Goated Fusion deck that had that kind of like aspect to it where you couldn't just when you're breaking this deck's boards you have to approach it in a systematic way because there's certain cards that have to be dealt with in a specific way but also because of that it means that if those cards are preventing you from playing you can't break the board because the way that you would go about breaking the board means that there's a certain order in how you would deal with it and the card that's preventing you from breaking the board can't be deal with dealt with on your third step you have to deal with it first but because you can't the rest of the cards don't matter you get what i'm saying like your fusions all float they replace themselves but like normally your opponent will be able to like break your macabre mirror jade board if they could special summon more than once so with winda up it becomes a problem and like it's so crazy like naturally it's either like dark ruler or like open super poly and then you have to kill me and so i really like that about this deck i've always valued the shit all cards i've always valued their utility the recursion the just the sheer power and aggression that they have going first and going second they're so adaptive in and out of formats and gamma has always been my go-to hand trap because we all know ash on fusion hurts my ball sacks bro uh, but it's not just that like if you open gamma with like meltdown and slayer that is like the most broken three card combination going second it's just insane like you just melt down they're trying to get it because they have to you gamma them you ultimate slayer and if they're playing tier you're just gonna send op cologne shuffle one of their tiers like rune kalos or something like that or whatever they freaking have and then op cologne's gonna add it all fusion and you're just gonna activate it and literally just dump dragon genius and summon op cologne pop negate negate it's just free real estate bro it's so gross like you're going second cards are so powerful um, and they lead into engine like should all fusions a one card starter ultimate slayer is a one card starter You can even super poly in response to like an imperm or a valor or like a sullic on your alistair 
and you can just like super poly the Alistair and like one of your opponent's tier fusions and summon Aguadis, and then you add invocation, Aguadis will pop, and then you can invocation and banish the Aguadis and the Alistair and go into um, the Makaba. So like even super poly helps you to insulate counterplay or even disruptions. It's just crazy because there's so much that's not there on pen and paper that only comes from testing and experience that it truly does validate a lot of the decisions that I made. So these are undeniably non-negotiables and I'm not changing these right here. These 12 going second cards um, have so much utility that they outweigh cards like Dark Ruler and Talents and Mystic Mind. And I know that sounds crazy, but they're multi-purpose. They solve problems and they inherently allow me to pick boards apart while also giving me a bit more consistency. So yeah, these are amazing. Like these are all 15 of my going second cards. And then for my true starters, we're playing three copies of Meltdown, an Optimus Prime. Meltdown's so broken in this deck, I just can't not play a card like this because every time you fusion summon, you're getting some type of broken effect like resolving aerial or resolving construct or resolving op cologne or like meltdown with schism up like summon op cologne by sending your opponent's tier op cologne's effect on summon the tier cannot activate in the new chain because of meltdown the last thing that happened was the fusion summon so like the send and the summons all at once your opponent's tier limit effect can't even activate because of meltdown meltdown is just so broken it's insane like this card is so gross i wanted to play full sparrow goods and the 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 crystal beast bridge and a pack and a bridge package just so i can have like three more copies of meltdown because it's just literally that disgusting you guys like i'm high key on the fence about it because of the bricks but it's just this card is just that good like it has so much power behind it like forget alistair if this card just had the effect that it says i would still play it it's just so good branded fusion and shadow fusion and tandem with meltdown is like an ftk like going first or going second like there's also so many cool interactions that you can take advantage of the protection the window that you have with meltdown that if you have chainables and quick plays any effects that you want to activate safely you can just chain them to your monster's effect on summon and your opponent literally can't do anything about it so it's so gross it's so good high key cracked um branded fusion i think is just a non-negotiable staple if you're playing shadows because if you're summoning lubelion branded fusion is a one card construct and what i also like about branded fusion is because it can send a shadow monster and your opponent like you can send like a card like hedgehog for example and let's say your opponent infinite impermanences or veilers you your lubelion if you have a shadow fusion or even a um el shadow fusion you can just simply activate those and fuse the Lebelion off with the Shadal monster you search off Hedgehog and still make a Construct play, which is so valuable to me. So it makes Branded Fusion like three more copies of any Shadal you want. So it's still a doll starter even if your opponent hand traps it, uh, just as long as they don't ash it, you know what I mean? And I'm playing the deer, but no Dogmaticas. As you guys can see, I really wanted to mitigate... Um, I'm not in mitigate, but I really wanted to just play the least amount of bricks that I can get away with. I'm already playing like the Shadal Traps and the Evil Twin and also the Albas. So I just felt like that was more than enough because I'm still playing Driver, you know what I mean? So I really didn't want to play like the Dogmatic of Punishment and the Fleur de Lis, even though they're great cards. It's just more cards that I don't want to draw, you know, and that don't really help me going second at all. Like, I'm not saying the Dogmatica cards are bad, but I'm saying that, like, Nadir Servant is just the only card I want to play because it's just always live and it's always good. And because I'm playing Albaz, you don't need to search a Dogmatica. And that's another good reason for why I'm playing one Albaz is because if they hand trap my Lubelion, you know what I mean, off of, um, Branded Fusion, and I just only have the one Albaz, I can Nadir to add him back. Which means now my follow-up brand infusion, I can just fuse Albaz off with like any other extra deck monster I have and still make Mirror Jade and like dump Alba Limitus to just search a shit all fusion for follow-up. So it's okay to play one. You don't have to play one. You can play two, but the main reason I was playing two in the past was because most of the time my first brand infusion would go into like shit all plays. And if I ever drew the second, it would it wouldn't be a dead draw. But I just literally don't care about De like drawing a dead um second branded fusion you know what i mean like that is just not good enough reason for me to play another brick in my list just because oh i don't want my second shit off um, my second branded fusion to be dead because like it doesn't matter like if i've resolved branded fusion and i've done like a construct play 
like I'm okay with just playing shoot all cards for the rest of the game. Um, let me get back because it kind of timed out on me. Um, it should be Shadol. No, it should be like um, sh it should be actually Dog Goo. I think it's under D. Yeah, it's it's Dog Goo. There we go. Um, oh yeah, so that that also brings up um another inclusion. I started playing Ecclesia. Um, so you can actually dump this from your deck um to your grave off of like multiple of your play starters, and it's just free recursion, and it also helps you to play through ham chops a lot better. Like, it being a tuner has, like, came up. Like, you can make Omega off of it, but also, like, you can go into cards like Baron with um, Ecclesia and also Aqualone. You can go into Baron, but that's also a nice to have, not a need to have. And my space in the extra deck so tight because I felt like Slayer was just too good of a card to not play in a deck like Shadal's. Um, it's just too gross, you guys. It's just way too valuable. It's literally just another Shadal Fusion going second that also just trades with a, a like, super strong threat. Um, so, like, even Rune Kalos, Rune Kalos can negate Shadal Fusion, so this just gets rid of Rune Kalos, and it's so good, it's not once per turn, it's absolutely gross, you guys. Um, so, like, like I was saying, I'm sorry, I know I'm going in circles and stuff, but, like, the three Band of Fusion, the three Nadirs, it's, it's purely, uh, like a Shadal starter most of the time, because, like, it's okay to Nadir and, like, grab a Schism, Schism's just still such a powerful card, everybody's playing darts and, and lights, and it's just literally a spot removal, bare minimum, even if they Dark Ruler you, you cleared a body in the process, and with Meltdown, it's just too free. Um, Alistair, Alistair is literally just, like, the Meltdown and the Terraforming with the Alistair is just, like, called by the Graves, because your opponent, if they have Ash and you're going first, they have to Ash this, because they just think you're gonna summon Macabre and just negate the Ash, so it allows, like, cards like these to just resolve freely. It's so good. I'm only playing two El Shadal Fusion in this build, um, simply because I decreased the amount of dolls I'm playing. I believe I'm only playing eight right now, so El Shadal kind of was being a dead draw sometimes, and I really didn't like that. I didn't want to draw it without Shadals, but I also didn't want to just play one. I always feel like you have to play at least two. It's just too good of a card to not play at least two of. Like, it's so gross. It's one of the best disruptions you can have. It's the most flexible of all the cards in your deck. Like I've said so many times, it dodges Valor, it dodges Infirm, it plays around Droll, uh, it plays around, like, main phase dot cards. Like, it's just so good. Like, cards that can only be activated in main phase, you can just draw phase, El Shadal. It plays around Elf. Like, it's so crazy. Like, you can L and draw phase and just, like, summon an Op Cologne and, like, permanent Elf and, like, send... Like, just, it's, it's just crazy, honestly. Like, it depends on what dolls you use, but it's so crazy. Like, this card is so good, it, it's broken. Like, honestly, and it's it's too good to not play. It's one of the best cards in your engine, and it counterplays so much counterplay. Like, when Dimensional Barrier was popular, this was one of the cards that allowed you to kind of, like, dodge it. And it's okay to just set it. Like, you don't have to always overextend. Like, you can have this in your comboing turn one. You can just keep it in your hand and just set it as another disruption. Like... This deck can like triple DD Crow, negate stuff, summon Winda, clear back row, constantly just like passively aggressive tell your opponent you're, that they just simply cannot play. And it always has follow ups. Every time your opponent breaks your board, they just give you cards by breaking your board. It's crazy. Um, I'm playing one of each of my Shadals right now. They do come up in multiples, but they're more recyclable now than they ever were in this list. You guys, don't forget that Op Cologne can add back any Shadal card from your graveyard. And because I'm playing one of all of them, Falco is just more valuable because you need the recursion. Like, when the second name comes up, that's where Falco is more valuable for you. Sometimes I don't even do the Resh combo turn one just so that I can have that, that grind game, that loop with Op Cologne, Resh, and, like, Falco. Just, like, the infinite resources. It's just so good, you guys. Um, Genius is a new inclusion for the Shadal count. This format, Shadal Fusion's just been going crazy. Like, I always send, like, Dragon Genius or, like, Aerial Genius, like... Most of the time, I am sending dragons, so it's like dragon aerial or like um, dragon genius, because like people always have freaking back rows, and it's just like the unknown is what scares me more than what I see, because I can break the board. I know I can't. I just like really hope that the set's not like something crazy. So dragon is just like super important, and this is like another way that you can outskill drain. Like branded fusion does let you out floodgates because you can dump dragon off branded fusion for your labellion, which is super duper nice, you guys. So card is just so much it's so much better in this list than it is in like pure dolls because you have more ways to just like get it off of one card than you ever had before um we already mentioned ecclesia um cartesia i mean this card is actually super nice it's like your should all fusion target per se like even if i wasn't playing gamma this is like the perfect light target because it recurs itself every turn 
and it just lets you play through so much disruption. It's really, 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 really nice. Like, if you do, like, get hand trapped on Lobelion and you, like, have access to this card, you can just still make Mirror Jade anyways, especially with Albaz being engraved. And then these are the five bricks, but you have to play them. Um, this is necessary because of Ultimate Slayer. Like, this format right now, Ultimate Slayer has to be able to dump links because a lot of these boards have, like, Elf or Appaloosa or, like, Mascarena and just topologic bomber dragon like there's just so many threats like i'm playing this because it's just way too good to not play so it's a brick it sucks to draw but worst case it's a dark to make window and that's the list you guys i'm gonna get into the extra deck now i'm playing double op cologne double construct double window this is the golden ratio as long as you're a smart player and you're skilled with this deck you can manage your extra deck resources infinitely you will ne and never run out so kind of like tier limits you can recycle your fusions but this deck is way older than tears and it was doing like stuff like what tears do this deck was doing that stuff first so you really gotta pay your respects to the goat like this deck is like the granddaddy of like this is like the og fusion deck it's like the first kind of fusion deck that i felt like was like whoa why did they even print these cards so branded you might say branded's better you might say tears better um i always have just have like such a fond love of this deck and if I was going to choose a fusion deck out of all of the ones that are out, I would always still choose Shadows. And I'm not going to lie, I'm actually really, really nice with this deck. Like, I've outplayed really good tier limit and branded players. And not just saying, like, those are the only decks, but just in comparison to other fusion archetypes. Like, I've had them, like, open absolute solitaire boards. Like, I didn't stop them, and I still won anyways. And, like, I've outgrinded them, I've, like, outplayed them, I've outsmarted them. Like, there's just tricks that this deck has that those decks do not have the same kind of tricks. So, this deck has a toolbox. You know, your utility is so expensive that your main deck is like a side deck in a lot of situations. So, there's a lot of game ones that this deck wins that other decks like that just don't win because they don't have that kind of, like, utility. They don't have the outs. This deck has outs that other decks just don't have. Mirror Jade, uh, Lubelion, and uh, Linatus for like the small branded package. I am playing um, Gurua again. Like if they like end on Rune Kalos and Dweller, I'm just gonna super poly them. Especially if they end on like Rune Kalos Dweller with the counter trap, I'm definitely gonna super poly them. Um, like most, like most definitely, bro. Like that's just too free. Um, and it stops Dweller because you know at the start of your draw phase you can turn player priority super poly them before they activate Dweller. Um, we have Makaba, Kaliga, and also Gwadis. These are recyclable, so you can play one of each. Omega for a fusion target for Slayer and for the Gamma package, and then also the Trouble Sunny. This is like the best link you can send. The only other card that is considered but it never comes up because there's just no XYZs that you really just can't get over. It's like this guy as like a Slayer target or a Nadir target, um, but it just hasn't came up, so... Unless it comes up multiple times in testing, I just feel like it's not necessary to play. And that's my list, you guys. Really hope you enjoy this. This is definitely something you want to consider. Um, play it. Don't knock it till you try it. It's really, really good. It's really fun. It's very powerful. Um, as far as side decking, the deck is naturally so good going first and second. I would definitely recommend a lot of counterplay for Flunder. Like, right now, a side deck card that's been overperforming for, for me is Raigeki. I've been playing um, 3 Raigeki, 3 Lightning Storm, 3 Evenly Matched in almost every deck that I play. Um, I think those 9 cards are just so good this format. Um, you're going to want to want Dark Ruler for Flunder. Um, there's like just there's a lot you can do, but I definitely would say Raigeki is a card you want to consider trying out. Um, it's really, really, really good. And ironically, against Tier, you really don't care about their floating because... As long as you're able to play, their cards floating and getting them advantage doesn't matter because you can outpace them. And as long as you can break their board and summon Winda, it doesn't matter how much follow up they got off of searching from like Kit Kalos and milling their spells and traps, it doesn't matter. Like, you can permanently negate their Solik and you can always dragon pop it. So, them, them having like Solik as an out to Winda is like not even a factor and it's not even a good argument because you can always deal with Solik before you even summon Winda. And you can also end your board in a way that either plays around Super Poly or has double window, so it doesn't matter if they have the Super Poly. So, God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. And y'all have a wonderful day. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Peace.